Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Let's Make, a series where we recreate fun and interesting game mechanics from AAA games using Unreal Engine 4. This week we'll be diving into Spider-Man for PS4. This will be a multi-part video where we break down jumping, web swinging, the point zip move and wall running as well to create a fully functional character to add to our Marvel game universe. Today we'll get everything set up and tackle the first move in Spider-Man's arsenal, the point zip. So let's get to it. To begin, I started with this character mesh I found on Sketchfab. I then created a custom rig that I based off UE4's standard mannequin skeleton. Animating Spider-Man is a very unforgiving process as his suit is skin tight and he extends his body in some pretty extreme ways. So when rigging the character I had to repeatedly test out the rig with hyper extended poses and repaint the weights to make sure his limbs would move properly. In order to achieve animations that were similar to the game, I used a pose based animation workflow. To do this I first found an animation to use as a base, then extracted a single frame from the animation which I then modified to create a similar pose to the game element I was copying. I then created longer additive animations to add the movement back into the poses. Next, I set up an IK system for the character to make sure his feet are always planted on the surface he's standing on. As well as using this system to tra traverse uneven surfaces, I also used it to help drive some of the animations, like when landing a jump. I did this with a land animation so he can land in his exact idle pose without messing around shuffling feet the character lands and is ready for action. Spider-Man can perform the point zip move by attaching to either the edge of a building or to a fixed point like the top of a lamppost. This point is indicated by a rotating circular widget when the move is possible. So to achieve this I needed to design a system which queries the environment to detect the most appropriate edge or point to use in the move. Detecting edges is a tricky thing to achieve in games and after trying several hacky solutions involving procedurally placing custom blueprints on every edge in the level, I came up with this elegant solution which uses between 3 and 5 line traces performed on every tick of the game. First I use a line trace directly from the camera, then use the normal of the hit object to send out another trace either from directly above or in front of the first hit. I then compare the normals of both hit surfaces to see if they're different enough to indicate an edge. If an edge was found, I then project the player's collision capsule onto the zip point to make sure the player can fit on the ledge. Next I designed a simple blueprint for fixed zip points like lampposts and attached this to the relevant objects in the game. Then on each tick of the game we send out a multi-sphere trace using a custom channel which can only detect possible zip points. We then check to see whether each point is directly in view and which point is closest to the player's line of sight. Finally, the system compares the distance from the edge points it has found to the character's line of sight to see which is nearest and then draws the HUD widget on this point. To design the VFX for the webs, I started with a simple beam emitter particle system. I then created a custom material for the beam using a texture I created of a tileable web pattern. This is used as an alpha mask, so only the web pattern is shown. I added another texture mask as well for the dark center of the web. To get an approximation of the webs being slung from Spider-Man's hands, I used a curve inside the particle system which adds initial noise to the web, which then quickly fades out. I also used a fixed speed for the particle system, so that the web beam takes a split second to travel from the source to the target. The source and target are then set dynamically inside a custom blueprint. So now with all the precursors out of the way, we can execute the move. To begin we put the character into a new animation state machine which handles blending between the different Zip2 animations. Once the character is in the new state, we then play an animation montage which triggers several events. First, we quickly rotate the character towards the zip point using an aim offset and a full body rotation in the first few frames of the animation. Then, when his hands are fully raised, 
we trigger the beam emitter to shoot the webs to the target point. Just as the webs connect, we freeze the character for a few frames. This stops the character's movement when in the air to give an exaggerated feeling of the webs connecting and being pulled upon. Next, as Spider-Man begins to pull back, we use the state machine to blend into the air animation and use a timeline to launch the character forward and rotate his body towards the zip point. We define the length of the zip timeline and which animation to play in the air by using the distance from the start point to the target point. If the target is close, he launches into a crouch pose with arms back, but if it's further away then he transitions to a streamlined dive pose or a dive pose with a twirl. Regardless of the length of the move, 0.15 seconds before he reaches the zip point, we trigger the final animation which blends from the fly pose to a perching pose and sets the animation state to perch. One of the coolest parts about the web zip move is the ability to perform a point launch if the player presses the jump button just as Spider-Man reaches his target point. Around half a second before Spider-Man lands the web zip move, we open up a window with a boolean for about half a second. If the player presses the jump button during this time, we transition to a roll animation and launch Spider-Man forwards before blending back into the jump apex state. To polish up the move a bit, I then added a particle trail effect to Spider-Man's hands and added some smoke and a radial flash which had triggered at the start of the point launch. I also added some cartoon-like speed lines as a post-process effect during the fastest parts of the move, which I found in this great tutorial by Unreal CG. So let's see the final result. Next time on Let's Make, we'll be using what we've made so far to add web swinging to the Spider-Man project. So be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out, and thanks for watching.